Chapter One of Among the Forest People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Claire. Mr. Red Squirrel comes to live in the forest. Life in the forest is very different from life in the meadow, and the forest people have many ways of doing which are not known in the world outside. They are a quiet people and do not often talk or sing when there are strangers near. You could never get acquainted with them until you had learned to be quiet also and to walk through the underbush without snapping twigs at every step. Then, if you were to live among them and speak their language, you would find that there are things about which it is not polite to talk, and there is a reason for all this. In the meadow, although they have their quarrels and their own troubles, they always make it up again and are friendly, but in the forest there are some people who can never get along well together, and who do not go to the same parties or call upon each other. It is not because they are cross or selfish or bad. It is just because of the way in which they have to live and hunt, and they cannot help it any more than you could help having eyes of a certain color. These are things which are all understood in the forest, and the people there are careful what they say and do, so they get on very well indeed, and have many happy times in that quiet, dusky place. When people are born there, they learn these things without thinking about it, but when they come there from some other place it is very hard, for everybody thinks it stupid and strangers to ask about such simple matters. When Mr. Red Squirrel first came to the forest, he knew nothing of the way in which they do, and he afterwards said that learning forest manners was even harder than running away from his old home. You see, Mr. Red Squirrel was born in the forest, but was carried away from there when he was only a baby. From that time until he was grown, he had never set claw upon a tree, and all he could see of the world he had seen by peeping through the bars of a cage. His cousins in the forest learned to frisk along the fence tops and to jump from one swaying branch to another, but when this poor little fellow longed for a scamper, he could only run down and around in a wire wheel that hummed as it turned, and this made him very dizzy. He used to wonder if there were nothing better in life, for he had been taken from his woodland home when he was too young to remember about it. One day he saw another squirrel outside, a dainty little one who looked as though she had never a sad thought. That made him care more than ever to be free, and when he curled down in his cotton nest that night, he dreamed about her, and that they were eating acorns together in a tall oak tree. The next day Mr. Red Squirrel pretended to be sick. He would not run in the wheel or taste the food in his cage. When his master came to look at him, he moaned pitifully and would not move one leg. His master thought that the leg was broken and took limp little Mr. Red Squirrel in his hand to the window to see what was the matter. The window was up and when he saw his chance, Mr. Red Squirrel leaped into the open air and was away to the forest. His poor legs were weak from living in such a small cage, but how he ran! His heart thumped wildly under the soft fur of his chest, and his breath came in quick gasps, and still he ran, leaping, scrambling, and sometimes falling, but always nearer the great green trees of his birthplace. At last he was safe and sat trembling on the lowest branch of a beech tree, the forest was a new world to him, and he asked many questions of a fat old grey squirrel. The grey squirrel was one of those people who know a great deal and think that they know a great, great deal, and want others to think so too. He was so very knowing and important that although he answered all of Mr. Red Squirrel's questions, he really did not tell him any of the things which he most wanted to know, and this is the way in which they talked. "'What is the name of this place?' asked Mr. Red Squirrel. "'This?' "'Why, this is the forest, of course,' answered the grey squirrel. "'We have no other name for it. "'It is possible that there are other forests in the world, "'but they cannot be so fine as this, "'so we call ours the forest.' "'Are there pleasant neighbours here?' asked Mr. Red Squirrel. "'Very good, very good. "'My wife and I do not call on many of them, "'but still they are good enough people, I think. "'Then why don't you call?' "'Why? "'Why, because they are not in our set. "'It would never do.' "'And the grey squirrel sat up very straight indeed.' "'Who is that gliding fellow on the ground below?' asked the newcomer. "'Is he one of your friends?' "'That? That is the rattlesnake. We never speak to each other. "'There has always been trouble between our families. "'Who lives in that hollow tree yonder?' "'Shh! Shh! That is where the great horned owl has his home. "'He is asleep now and must not be awakened, "'for squirrels and owls cannot be friendly.' "'Why not?' "'Because it has always been so.' "'And who is that bird just laying an egg in her nest above us?' "'Speak softly, please. That is the cowbird, and it is not her nest. "'You will get into trouble if you talk such things aloud. "'She can't help it. She has to lay her eggs in other birds' nests, "'but they don't like it.' "'Mr. Red Squirrel tried very hard to find out the reason for this, 
but there are always some things for which no reason can be given, and there are many questions which can never be answered, even if one were to ask, Why, 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 all day long? So Mr. Red Squirrel, being a wise little fellow, stopped asking, and thought by using his eyes and ears he would in time learn all that he needed to know. He had good eyes and keen ears, and he learned very fast without making many mistakes. He had a very happy life among the forest people, and perhaps that was one reason. He learned not to say things which made his friends feel badly, and he did not ask needless questions. And, after all, you know, it would have been very foolish to ask questions which nobody could answer, and worse than foolish to ask about matters which he could find out for himself. It is in the forest, as in the world outside. We can know that many things are, but we never know why they are. End of chapter 1 Recording by Claire